Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Let's continue with uh, chapter four on transient heat conduction based on the textbook of Sengel and Gijar. Uh, we've started looking at what is transient heat conduction. It is how the temperature changes as function of time. We have derived a lump system approach, which is a very simple and easy uh, solution uh, from first principles. However, with certain limitations, which is being described by the build numbers, the ratio of the conduction resistance divided by the convection resistance. Then we've looked at three different geometries, which are relatively simple. A plain wall, a long cylinder, and a sphere. And an analytical solution has been derived for them. Unfortunately, the analytical solution is not simple. It's a long series. However, we, uh, we have shown to you that if tau, the non-dimensional time, is larger than 0.2, then normally if we just use the first term, first term approach, then the error would be less than 2%. From there, we've moved to paragraph 4.4, which is on the semi-infinite solid. So what is a semi-infinite solid? Well, typical bodies which are relatively large, like that of the Earth, where we are interested on what happens on the surface. So what is very important with a body is that the inner temperature doesn't change. So that is almost the simplest application. But now we get to other applications, as was asked just now, typically a wall. Maybe the wall is 300 millimeters. How deep can we go into the wall? Well. What is important firstly is that, you know, uh, the time in terms of where we look for a solution must be so short that the inner temperature of the wall doesn't change. So that should be a constant. Then we can make the assumption of the lump system approach. But I'm going to do some examples now to make it clearer to you. Okay. So, now with the semi-infinite solid, we have looked at the derivation with a first set of boundary conditions. And with that boundary conditions, there was a flat surface with a temperature Ts at T equals zero. But there are three other cases, and we've, we can just look at them quickly, Tamron, in terms of the equations. So the first one was a specified surface temperature, and there's the equation. The second one was the surface heat flux. The third one is the convection on the surface. And the fourth one is the energy pulse. So if we can show them schematically, okay, just schematically, then they would look typically at something like that. That is the surface, and in this direction, it should be infinite. Okay. Now, there's not any body that is infinite at this stage. Okay, so it is a relative thing in terms of how far are we from the inside. But this temperature here must remain constant as Ti. So it cannot change. Okay. So with case one, we have that this temperature of the surface is a constant. Okay. The second case is where we've got the surface and now we have a constant heat flux. Okay, so the heat flux is a constant. That can be maybe an electrical heater on the surface or it can be radiation heat transfer. The third application would be where that is number two. The third one would be when we have convection heat transfer over the surface. So there's a certain velocity and a certain environmental temperature and there's a heat transfer coefficient that is given to us or we can get the heat transfer coefficient. So that is application three and application four is the one where we have an any a laser an energy pulse given as joules per square meter. Okay, that is application four. So for each one of them, is there a solution, an analytical solution, all of them in terms of the error function. Okay, so let's do an example. 
I think that would make things a little bit more clear. Uh, example <coughs> would be the Earth, okay. Earth's surface, where on it there's snow for three months of the year. Okay, so there's snow for three months of the year. And the Earth was originally at 15 degrees Celsius, and that is a good average. You can go and measure the Earth's temperature approximately at a few depths, and you will find it is about 15 degrees Celsius. And here's a pipeline underneath, okay. and that is the distance x from the surface, and this snow And the environment temperature is so low that that temperature is equal to minus 30 degrees Celsius. So Siberia or a place like that. Very cold temperature, snow for three months of the year. And it is given to us that the thermal conductivity of the ground is equal to 0.4 watts per meter Kelvin. And alpha is equal to 0.15 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 square meters per second. And the question is, how deep must this pipeline be of water so that the water doesn't freeze? Okay. So we can say that we would like to know at what depth will this surface temperature of the pipe be zero degrees Celsius? So that would be the minimum depth that the pipeline should be. Do you agree? Obviously, if you want to make sure, you can decide on maybe one degree Celsius or two or three, something like that. Okay, okay so if we now look at all the applications that's available, the four of them, it's very easy to see that, I mean, we've got a constant surface temperature which is prescribed. So it is case one in terms of the solution. Do you agree? Okay, so let's look at the slide again, Tamarin, in terms of case one. There you see the four cases of the four equations. So the first equation, case one, is the one that we need to use. So it's case one. And the solution says that the temperature it's a function of x of t minus ti divided by the surface temperature minus ti is equal to the error function, the complementary error function multiplied by x divided by 2 times alpha t. You agree? Okay. So let's look on the left hand side. We want to know this temperature at a certain depth. What should it be? We want to know <coughs> it at zero. Okay. Minus the initial temperature, which is equal to 15. Okay. Zero minus 15 divided by the surface temperature which is equal to minus 30 minus again the surface temperature which is 15 and that is equal to 0.333 okay. it's equal obviously to the error function complementary of eta where eta is then equal to everything in brackets you agree? Okay. So if we can look at table 4.4. Okay, I'm going to show it to you quickly. Then we can try to see what is the solution for eta. There's a graph, okay? But that would be for the error function, not the complementary error function. There is the one for the complementary error function. And what would you say is the answer? Approximately. Okay. 
Okay, so the error function should be equal to 0 0.333. Okay, so if you look at 0 0.33, you're on the left approximately, there it is. So that should be about the solution there, do you agree? Okay, so we look, look on the y scale because that's the answer. That's not eta, it's the result of eta. Okay. So if we look at that, then we can see approximately the answer, or if you can go look in the tables, they, there they are. Can you refine it now for me? What would you say is the answer? What do you think is the answer? You've got it? Yes, that's it. So it's very easy. From table 4.4, we can find that the eta is equal to 0 0.6841. You agree? Okay. So that's now very easy. So eta is also equal to x divided by 4 times alpha t. Okay, take note. Obviously the square root of 4 is 2, so sometimes you can also write it on the left hand side like here. 2 times alpha t. It's the same. Okay? Okay, and eta, we've just solved eta, is equal to 0 0.6841. It's equal to x is what we want to know. We want to know how long will it take before the ground temperature would be at zero after three months. That is what we want to know. Divided by the square root of four times alpha is equal to 0.15 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by t. And what is the time? It is the time in seconds. Okay. So take note, it's three months, okay, multiplied by, let's assume there are 30 days in a month, okay. It's every day there are 24 hours, and in every hour there are 60 minutes and 60 seconds. Okay. Do you agree? Three months, 30 days, 24 hours, 60 minutes, 60 seconds. That is the time that we need. And if we now solve this, we can get that the depth is 1.478 meters. So, if the pipeline is about 1.5 meters and deeper, even after three months, there will be no freezing on the surface. Does that make sense? Any questions? A very simple problem, and I hope that illustrated to you the use typically of these equations. Is there anything that you're worried about? Ladies and gentlemen? Anything? Okay. Let's do a second example. Now the second example <coughs> is also going to be soil where now we have a wind flowing over it at a relatively high velocity. The heat transfer coefficient is 40 watts per square meter degree Celsius. The wind temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius. The soil is initially at 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. Thermal conductivity is equal to 0 0.9 watts per meter Kelvin. Now alpha is equal to 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5 meters square per second. 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5 square meters per second. Now, the question is determine <coughs> the 
the temperatures, okay, the temperatures at 100 millimeters underneath the ground, okay, at 200 millimeters and 500 millimeters at three different depths. Okay. Right, if we now look at the three different applications, if we look again at, at it, in terms of the different boundary conditions, which boundary conditions are valid here now? It's obviously this one, case three. We've got the velocity over the surface, there's the heat transfer coefficient, and there's the environmental temperature of it. Okay, and the body originally is at the temperature Ti. Okay, so now for case three, you'll see the equation becomes a little bit more complicated. So it looks like this, the temperature minus Ti divided by T infinite minus Ti is equal to the error function, the complementary one, multiplied by x divided by the square root of 4 times alpha t minus e, or exponent, of hx k plus h square alpha t divided by k square multiplied by the complementary error function of x divided by the square root of 4 times alpha t plus the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the square root of alpha t divided by k. Okay. So I'm going to give you a minute to write it down. The temperature, the non-dimensionalized temperature is equal to the complementary error function multiplied by x divided by the square root of 4 times alpha t minus e, or the exponent, of hx divided by k plus h squared divided by alpha t k squared everything multiplied by the complementary error function of x divided by the square root of 4 times alpha t plus the transfer coefficient multiplied by the square root of alpha t divided by k. Do you all have it? Okay. So, if you look at it, you will immediately get tired of solving this equation, isn't it? Okay. But, it's not going to be so difficult, believe me. Okay. So, what normally helps is to see that they are actually not to just go and put in all the terms and try to solve it on your on your pocket computer. Okay. What helps is to see that there are certain terms that actually repeat. Okay. So it is easier to take it out and first to calculate that before we put it into the function. However, you can do it just as you want. So that is how I would do it. So how I did it is, I'm going to say, look at the term x divided by the square root of 4 times alpha t. And that is equal to, okay, the first one is I want to know at the depth of 100 millimeters. So 0.1 meters, so that is what my x equal to. Divided by 4 times alpha, which is equal to 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by the time, okay, the seconds, and it's 10 hours. 10 hours, so it is 10 times 3,600 seconds. And the result of that is equal to uh, 0.066. Okay. The next term hx divided by k. hx divided by k is equal to 40 multiplied by 0.1 divided by k, which is equal to 0.9, and that is equal to 4.441. Okay. 
the next term, h squared multiplied by alpha t divided by k squared is equal to 40 squared, 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5, multiplied by the time is 10 hours of 3600 seconds, divided by k, and k is equal to 0.9 squared. The transfer coefficient is 40, alpha is given, the time is 10 hours, divided by the thermal conductivity which has also been given. And that is equal to 1138. Okay? And then the last term, the heat transfer coefficient, multiplied by the square root of alpha t, divided by k. The heat transfer coefficient is 40, multiplied by the square root of 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5, multiplied by the time, is 10 hours of 3600 seconds, divided by the thermal conductivity, which is equal to 0.9, and the result is 33.7. Okay, so now we have to put it back in here and calculate the equation. Do you agree? I hope there's somebody who doesn't agree with me. Tell me why. Aha, uh -huh. right. So just take a look at if we can look at the solution again of the error, error function, Tamron. If eta is 3.6 and larger, okay then the complementary error function is equal to zero. The result of it is equal to zero. Okay. Now, here is the complementary error function, do you see? So this term is equal to 0 0.066, and this one is equal to uh, 1138, is that right? Um, oh, sorry, I'm very close here, 33. 33.7. So this term in total is far larger than 3.66. You agree? Therefore, this is equal to zero. Okay. So if this is equal to zero, then this is equal to zero. Okay. So the result is that this equation reduces only to this first term. Okay. Therefore, we can say that the temperature distribution, the non-dimensionalized temperature distribution, is equal to the complementary error function only of the term x divided by the square root of 4 times alpha t. Okay, and this is equal to, this is equal to 0 0.066, we've already calculated it, okay, and if we go and look at the solution for the complementary error function at this point, 0 0.066, if you can just look on the table for me, please Tamara. What do you see is the solution equal to? If eta is equal to 0 0.066, then this is equal to 0 0.92 from the table. You agree? From the solution. All of you agree? Do you see it? You happy with that? Okay. So, it now means we can now solve this. 
we can get the temperature as function of time minus the initial temperature which is 10 divided by the environmental temperature T infinite which is now minus 10 the wind temperature minus the initial temperature is 10 and everything is equal to 0.92 therefore the solution of the temperature okay. so therefore the solution of the temperature at 100 millimeters says that the temperature would be equal to minus 8.4 degrees Celsius yep so, so according to the tables here, uh, 0.92 looks like it's 1.3. Yeah. So, so in this case, we have to look at eta is equal to 0 0.066. Okay. So if I can uh, just show you here on the on the table. Uh, it is very easy to make this mistake, so just be careful for it. So there is eta equal to 0 0.06, do you see? And it is just a little bit larger than 0 0.06, so the solution is there, approximately there, you see? 0 0.93 approximately. Okay. Right, and now we can go and repeat the calculations for the other values of x. So if we come back to, to here, uh, where we've got the problem, we said that this is now the soil, and we also want the solution at temperatures of 200 millimeters and 500 millimeters. So all we need to, go, to do is to change this to 0.2 and to 0.5, and we can work through the solutions again. And the result of those two solutions or that the temperature at a depth of 200 is equal to minus 7 degrees Celsius and at the depth of 500 it is equal to minus 2.8 degrees Celsius. You can go and do those calculations at home. Okay. Do you understand the application of uh, a semi-infinite solid now? Okay. So, coming back again to the question that was originally asked. Both these examples are now for the Earth. Something which is very big. And I think all of us would agree that some, if something occurs on the surface of the Earth, it is not going to influence the core temperature. Okay. But now we get to other bodies. For example, the beef carcass it was 240 millimeters. So the question is, can you use a semi-infinite approach for that? The answer is yes. If you do it maybe for a short period of time, maybe a few seconds, maybe a minute or two, and very close to the surface, then it would work fine. You will have to go and look, however, to make sure that the inner temperature of the carcass, which was 37, stays constant. The moment that drops, then you know that the semi-infinite solution is not valid anymore. Okay. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Right. Paragraph 4.4 is the next part in the textbook. And that is called multidimensional. S systems. Multidimensional systems. Okay. Now two paragraphs back, we've started with three geometries. We have started with the large plane wall. Okay, do you remember? The large plane wall. We've looked at the solution for a cylinder, a long cylinder, and also for a sphere. We've got solutions for that. Now something that you've done in mathematics was the product solution. You remember the product solution? Right. That's the reason why you did it. So, now with the product solution, if you go and look at the analytical solutions for this, you can actually now use the product solution to generate, listen, you can use the product solution 
to generate new geometries and new solutions. For example, let's look at the case where we have a plane wall in this direction. Okay, okay so this is the la large plane wall. Looking like that. Okay. So the large plane wall, we change the axis so that it is in the x direction, not in the y direction. And we look at the solution on it for the long cylinder. Like that and like that. Now, what we get is that this intersection gives us what is called a short cylinder. short cylinder. Okay, now I know my sketch is not so good, so I'm going to show you a better one. Like that. Okay. So it gives us the solution of a short cylinder. So it means that the product solution says then that the temperature now as function of R x and T. Previously the, the solution was always only in one direction. It was either in R or in X. It was in R for the sphere and the cylinder and it was in X for the long cylinder. Now it is a function of both minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite of the short cylinder SC is the short cylinder, is equal to the solution, take note, only as a function of x, multiplied by t infinite, divided by ti minus t infinite of the large plane wall, okay, multiplied by the temperature distribution, Take note, only as a function of R and T, minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite for the long cylinder. Okay. So now we have generated a new solution for a new geometry, which is called the short cylinder. And it's only the product of those two. And it is not only the short cylinder that can be generated. Many more geometries can be generated. And if you look there in the table in your textbook, there are 12 of them. Okay. There are many more, but in your textbook only 12 are given. So if you look very carefully, you will see Here is the, uh, it's a bit difficult to see, the cylinder there, there's a corner of an of a object, uh, the, sorry, that's the short cylinder, uh, that is a long cylinder, but here we've got the solution only on this part here, do you see? So now you can get the solution at the top, where previously we said that we do not want to look at this. We consider this as, that as an insulated body. Now we can get the solution there if this one is very, very long. Okay. So there are six geometries now available with six different solutions. And the solutions are given there, so you don't have to go and worry about how you're going to get them. Okay? You see them. So let's look at an example. And we are specifically going to look at the example of a short cylinder. 
And the example looks like this. Short cylinder. And it's a brass cylinder made from brass. The thermal conductivity is 110 watts per meter Kelvin. The alpha value is equal to 33.9 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6, 6 square meters per second. The initial temperature of it is 120 degrees Celsius, so it has been heated. And the question is now, if it is been put in an environment, and I'm going to get to the environment just now, uh, what would the temperature be after 15 minutes? Okay. And we are specifically interested in the temperature at specific points. And these would be the temperature in the center, I'm going to use zero for that, the temperature at the top, so exactly there, and then the temperature at that point there. Okay. So at three different points, we want the solution after 15 minutes if this short cylinder is being put into an environment where the environmental temperature is equal to 25 degrees Celsius, the heat transfer coefficient is equal to 60 watts per square meter degree Celsius. And remember, this condition is valid all around the body. Okay. So let me write it here also just to make it clear. Environment temperature here is also 24. Heat transfer coefficient is also equal to 60 watts per square meter degree Celsius. So it is all around this cylinder. Okay, and I forgot the dimensions. That dimension is 100 millimeters. And this dimension is 120 millimeters. So this solution is the product solution, the product solution of firstly a long cylinder with a radius of R0 of 50 millimeters. Okay. R0 is 50 millimeters and a plain wall. of which 2L is equal to 120 millimeters. Okay. 2L. Why 2L? Because, remember, with a plain wall, that distance is known as 2L. And in the equations, of course, L is used. So L would be equal to 60 millimeters. <coughs> Do you agree? Okay, so how are we going to solve this problem? What we're going to do is, we're first going to look at the solution for the long plane wall, the solution for the cylinder, and then we're going to multiply them. Okay. But we will have to do them separately. So let's look on this board at the plane wall. And on this side we are going to look at the long cylinder. Okay, the plane wall and the long cylinder. So the plane wall, again there it is, with 2L is equal to 120 millimeters, and in this one the cylinder, like that, of which R0 is 50 millimeters. Okay. Now remember, 
something that is very important and that you need to think of that we have to take into consideration is that when we're going to get a solution we can get a solution on a plane okay so we can get a solution on the center do you agree by solving theta zero or we can get a solution on that plane there which would then be where L is equal to 60 millimeters on the surface and the same here we can get a solution on the center line and we can get solutions at the different radia so at first we're going to get solutions on the center line only on that center surface so if we look at this case at tau then it is equal to alpha t divided by l squared okay alpha has been given as 33.9 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 okay the time is 15 minutes so it is 15 multiplied by 60 divided by L square and in terms of how I've made this drawing now I hope it is clear to you that L is not 120 millimeters but is equal to 60 millimeters okay therefore if we solve now the non-dimensionalized time it is equal to 8.48 which is larger than 0.2 which means we can only have to use the first term solution right now this is a trap in the sense that many students would go and solve tau and then they're going to use it for the calculation on this side also and that is why I'm writing it next to each other so here you will see if we calculate tau going to do it here tau is equal to alpha t divided by in this case r0 square you don't have to remember it it is in the table in table 4.1 it is well defined okay and that is equal to again 33.9 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 15 minutes multiplied by 60 seconds divided by the radius which in this case is equal to 50 millimeters and the non-dimensionalized time for this solution or for this case would be 12.2 again it is larger than 0.2 which means that the first term approximation would be valid and can be used okay you agree? The build number. The build number. Okay. So please do not give me a heart attack. Build number is equal to, not equal to the volume divided by the surface area. That definition is just valid for the lump system approach. Again, the build number is defined in your table. So use it as defined. And that would be for the plane wall, it would be equal to HL divided by k <coughs> excuse me okay the transfer coefficient is equal to 60 the length l is equal to 60 millimeters divided by k which is 110 and the build number is equal to 0.03273 again please do not say well this is less than 0.2 and now i can use the lump system approach okay it has been calculated differently. Let's also calculate the build number on this side. And here we've got that the build number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the radius divided by k. The heat transfer coefficient is 60 multiplied by the radius is equal to 50 divided by the thermal conductivity is 110. And that gives us a build number of 0.02727 okay so in terms of the solution for this we see that 
tau is larger than 0.2. So Tamerlan, if we can just go, go to the tables again, table 4.1, etc. quickly. Remember, that is the general solution. That would now be for the cases when tau is not necessarily larger than 0.2. If it's larger than 0.2, we can use the approximate solutions. And there are six of them. The first ones, we can get the solution anywhere at a point X or R. And the second set of solutions, we want it at the center. Now in this case, we first want it at the center. We want to get the solution at the two planes on the center. Okay. So, if we now go and do that, Then for this one, table 4.1, again table 4.2, oh, sorry, 4.2, we can go and look now for different build numbers. So let's look at uh, that, okay, there's the different build numbers, again in three sets of columns, the first one the plain wall, second one cylinder and the third one the sphere. So we have to look at the second set of columns because we want to look now at, oh sorry, for the first set because we first want to look at the plain wall. Okay. So if the build number is equal to 0 0.03273, what is the solution? Okay. Okay. I've got that lambda 1 is equal to 0 0.1799 and A1 is equal to 1.005. You agree? Okay. Again here, now for the long cylinder, now we look in the second set, and now we look at the build number of equal to 0 0.0272. Okay. So for this case, we can now solve that lambda 1 is equal to... Um, 0.2... 328 and A1 is equal to 1.007. Okay. Okay, I'm seeing I'm running out of time, so I'm going to skip a step here or two, but you can just go and put it in. So if you now use this in terms of the solution, you can go and solve that theta is equal to uh, Obviously, the temperature, uh, you know, I, I will show that later, minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite is equal to 97.21 minus 25 divided by 120 minus 25, and that is theta is equal to 0.76. Okay, and for this side, theta is equal to uh, T is minus 25. Okay, I'm not going to get that. Let me leave this and we will continue with this last part. Let's do it up to here and then I will continue with the next lecture. Otherwise, it's going to be too messy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Any questions?